Hey Instagram, I think I'm waiting on Facebook. Hey, what's going on world? It's me again, Ethan Smith, aka Mr. Peen, my beautiful wife, my life, the lovely Tim Kedia, on another wonderful Saturday soulful session of expression sessions. Well, we express ourselves about some things that's on our mind and our heart that God shared with us. Where well, you get to express yourself by how some of these things might influence you or helped you or some of these things you just don't like at all. This is expression session. So here's what I need you to do for me. I need you to share this video. I need you to watch part of this video. I need you to tag somebody in this video who you believe could be blessed by this video. If this video helps you at any time in any shape, form or fashion. So please express yourself on this episode today as we have a little bit of love, laughter, relationship, and express ourselves. Are you, are you ready to go? I'm having a hard time. I'm attempting to uh -huh. die, go yeah, live die. on my page. But, hey, Cousin um, Thelma. Here, let me help you out. Let me help my wife go live just a second, y'all. And we'll give people time to get in. Tag that friend that you don't see on here. Let them know we own. It's time to go. You got to go to you, beautiful. And then when you scroll up, it should be right there. Ah. I don't know if that's a new feature or what. And then you turn your camera around. Everybody don't got to see your cords or whatever you got going on. Yeah. Cousin Thelma's in the building. How you doing? How hey, you hey. doing? Hello over there on Tim Kedia's page. How is your Saturday, love? Oh, let me. you in the front in the rain. Oh, the good. Oh, from the window. Yeah, don't worry about it. That's good right there. I oh, what's the name? I can move. Hold on. If I put this here, is that too much or? No, that's not too much for me. Okay. Too much you cut you? off a little bit. No, it's okay. It's cool. I'm cutting on. We just got to get close. Hey, nah. hey, now we just got to get close. Hey, <laughs> nah. Hey, nah. Wait, don't y'all just hold on. Don't worry about that. We just got to get close. Hey, Sit now look at that. Got my new Father's Day stunner shades for the next time I'm in the wolf den and we doing grunt speak. I was looking for some blue ones and God bless me. I'm good. How are both of you? I'm doing, doing good. good. How about you? Yeah. My now, don't, now, you be honest, because I'm being honest. You be honest. How are you doing? Okay. <laughs> I don't know where you're going with that. I feel fine. Should I not be okay? Yeah, you should be okay. I'm just messing with you. Oh, okay. She said, how are both of you? And we both at the same time, I said, be, being good. So I figure, okay, we both can't be doing good. Yes, we can. We can be, but that's another penny. That's a plus. We're having that's a good day. A, that's another penny. I, I'm what? having a rough day. I said we both. Oh. Don't. Yes, don't. we can. Yes, we can. And yes, we <laughs> have been. Anyhow, I got my Father's Day glasses on. I have been looking for some new sunglasses, some with the blue tint. Ooh, it kind of gave me that Prince Purple Rain look from the movie when he had the purple reflection. That's what we going with. <laughs> That's the first thing I seen because I can see my reflection all and everything, man. Yeah. Only movie I've ever really seen like that when I was a kid was Purple Rain. So that's what came to me. Anyhow, got <laughs> my I'm just afraid what that might mean for the people. You gonna sing something? Or? Oh, <laughs> see, I ain't even. I ain't even. <laughs> it's been that a was while. Stevie, wasn't it? It's been yeah, that was. But, but I was getting my own thing. Don't oh, worry about that. Oh, they, okay. Hey, legends, don't worry about that. You gotta take different styles mm -hmm. and make it your own. Oh, so okay. I was gonna add a little, gonna bit, a little, little bit, bit of this and a little yeah, bit of that. Oh, absolutely, oh, okay. That's, cool. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Extemporaneous. That song I was gonna do. Oh. Anyhow, well, it's gonna be great. Anyhow, I'm not <laughs> not to, not today. I'm gonna get back on. I'm gonna get back on topic. I'm. How's your Saturday? Anyhow, she said we doing good. As you can see, we laughing, we loving, we being silly. We doing good, and hopefully you doing good as well, Thelma, and everybody else that's tuned in who just tuned in. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for supporting our channel. Continue to watch. Continue to live stream. Watch party. Continue to share these videos, man. You man, you uplift my heart. Thanks, brother. Hey, I appreciate it. Ah, uh, 
Sir, you have to tell me what you want to be addressed as. It's the old military baron, so it's hard for me to call you Christian or Mr. Dykes when I knew you as a PL, but I appreciate it, sir. Hey, man, I'm just doing what God called me to do and just bringing my lovely wife along for the ride. Hey, nah. <laughs> so how was your Saturday? How did you? How did your couponing and everything go? Um, it went well. Um, yeah, it went well. Yeah. I had to think about it. Like, I ain't really coupon today, but yes, I did. You did a little bit. You <laughs> I did a little, a little bit. So, yeah, it was good. I like my shades. They feel heavy on my face. It's a thing, too. I can't believe. <laughs> That's too. Y'all don't understand, see? I've been working on, uh, for lack of better words, getting my family to strike a few words from our vocabulary. One is T-R-Y, say it for yourself. And the other <laughs> one is C-A-N apostrophe T. Just to, let's just not use those words and put ourselves in a position to always can and always do you may not be doing it well my attempt was to get my family to stop saying it so we created this penny jar and this tally sheet where you keep tallies now before i was keeping tallies <laughs> I, I felt like i was doing great <laughs> like was, but now that we're keeping tallies i'm about 20 tallies in okay Help me, y'all. Just pray for me. Just, <laughs> just pray for me. Just pray for me. And my attempt to convert them. Oh, that's good. Thank you, Jesus. Because that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about conversion. And my attempt to convert my family to not saying these words. I, I, I unconsciously use these words regularly. I, I mean, on a regular basis. And I catch myself. And my attempt to convert them to my ways, I went back to what I thought they ways were, and they're not saying the word at all. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing how, um, call me Chris, bro. We are brothers now. You guys crack me up. All right, Chris. <laughs> thanks. I appreciate it. Man, these thunder shades, they almost got some infantry blue in there. Almost look like chips and punch from uh, California <laughs> Highway <laughs> Hey, man, I could have seen me now with some of those uh, biker boots on, the horse riding boots, and like the pants from my squats. And that guy was so good. I would have been converted to a full blown highway patrol cop. Absolutely. When you in <laughs> okay. Texas, if you want your belt buckle on your. The glasses. You know, don't worry oh, about it. Don't worry about it. Oh, but no, on. anyhow. How I was attempting to convert y'all over to my way, what I what I believe was the right way. This is the way you should do it. You need to strike this word from your vocabulary to help change your life. This is what works for me to set up your life. And and sometimes when people attempt to convert you, they're not even living the life. Mm. They're not even living the life. Kind of like do as I say and not as I do. Uh, uh, yeah, you could use that. You could use whatever you like, love. Definitely do as I say, not as I do. I'm just making sure I don't have anybody to respond to. Yeah, but do as I say, not as I do. That's good. What else you got for me? Or, I don't know. You have those people who attempt to tell you how, you know, things should go in your life when they don't have their life together. Mm-hmm. And another thing that I was really thinking about when I think about convert, when you start maybe going to a church or you start going to a school or you come, you become part of a club, we want to, okay, let's talk about when I say the word convert, conversion, convert for short. Let's talk about what conversion is, the process of changing or causing something to change from one form to another. Or you can take it even deeper, the fact of changing one's religion or beliefs or the action of persuading someone else to change theirs. Mm. So conversion, to convert something from one form to another, whether it be their beliefs, it be their religion, uh, changing the action that they do by the words that you use to convert, to convert them. And I think a lot of times what happened is, Say, for example, me attempting to convert you guys to, to, to use a different vocabulary. This would be more positive. This would be more forward and uplifting in your life or whatever I may think. You know, when you go to a church environment sometimes, 
when you go into a church environment, before you fully know who God is, before you know, fully know who Christ is, they're looking to convert you to Christianity. But they're looking to convert you with these rules and they're looking to convert you and tell you you're supposed to be almost perfect. You know what I'm saying? If you commit a sin, that's the cardinal thing. You know, you always, yes, you're supposed to repent, but how can God forgive you? It's like, I am attempting to change you now to be this way for God. But that's not what God's word says as far as conversion. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I believe. I was looking at some scriptures earlier and in Luke 5 and 32. And I'm thinking, thinking about people attempting to convert you. I want you to be something that you're not because I don't feel like you fit right. You're 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 not good enough. You're not you're not in the right position. So I need you to change, right? I mm -hmm. need to convert you to something different. But God's word says, "I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance." I haven't come to call the perfect ones. I didn't come to call the ones that's good. Everybody that comes into the church is not going to instantly convert to my way. It's still going to be some things that I need to break down and show them and use them in their life. But people sometimes expect us to just convert on a dime and they haven't completely converted. Absolutely. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. Because conversion a lot of times is a process. Mm -hmm. And you don't get to skip steps. Mm. Sometimes we can um, change instantly. Mm -hmm. And there are some things that just take time. They're so deeply rooted in us mm -hmm. that it just takes time. So I think it's unfair to believe that someone is going to change everything about them overnight and to believe that them changing to what you think they should be is where they're ultimately going to go mm. so you said conversion is a process and that's that's a really a good thing i think back when i was younger my dad had that van that conversion van and when I was looking up conversion vans earlier, they talked about how they came about in the 70s, how it went from the pickup truck just to, to, to pick up, you know, things to throw in the back. And the station wagon wasn't enough room anymore for the family. So they combined the two and became a conversion van. And then they took the conversion van one step further and then it can, you know, transform it and convert it to a cargo truck. Then they start outfitting it in the 90s to where people are living out of them. Now here it is 2020. People are taking old conversion vans and completely changing them and converting them into miniature RVs and things like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it's a process. We've watched those YouTube videos to where the guy go buys the truck and then he shows the quick breakdown, but then he shows the behind the scenes and it's like six months to convert this over from a regular vehicle into a vehicle that I can live in that's sustainable, you know, yes. energy, power, electricity. So six months to transform and convert a vehicle, but people want you to transform and convert in six days or six months in your life of getting with Christ after you've been living on the wrong side of the track or the confused side of the track for the last 36 years of your life. Absolutely. It doesn't happen that fast. Conversion is a process. It takes time. And people want you to switch like that. But God's word says, I have not come to call the righteous. Because when we feel like we change, when we feel like we good enough and we can tell everybody what to do, he ain't even looking for you. Because you so high and mighty, you so righteous. Righteous a person of conduct, morally right or always justifiable. Yes. You know, I'm not looking for you. I'm looking for the sinners. I'm looking for the people that's broken and know they broken and not afraid to repent to help someone else because everybody not going to have it together. And once you do get to a place of stability, you can't never forget where you came from. No. Not to bring yourself down, mm -hmm. but to look at that next person and say, I used to be there. So, you know, I can't really judge them now that I'm so much further along in the process. Because but the, to give them compassion because you do understand, you know, where they are. You have to because the same enemy that attacked you when you were going through, the same enemy that, that constantly sent the, 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 uh, the old negative things, the fears, the worries, the scares your way, the same devil or the same family members, you know, maybe not your, maybe not my mother, but their mother, maybe not your father, but their father, maybe not their auntie or their uncle, but the same tactics, the same strategies that we get affected with in life, the enemy attacks them as well. So you are absolutely right in your saying you have to have compassion and you have to have care and you have to have grace when people are 
are con uh, attempting to convert them li convert their lives not just to Christ but converting their their, their lives for themselves it's because it's a mindset shift absolutely it, it's really a mindset shift so you you have to you have to allow that person the freedom because again the same enemy that attacked us is the same enemy that is attacking them and it's a process in um john 10 and 10 it says the thief comes to only steal and kill and destroy to steal kill and destroy so if something was stolen from you you're not the only person in this world who something something's been stolen from absolutely and you know what that feels like you know the hurt you know the pain you know the frustration the worry the the anxiety you know what i'm saying the mm -hmm. restlessness so to go back to your point we have to have grace for those people who's converting their life over to god we have to have empathy and sympathy for those people who are attempting to change from something that they used to be into what God is be calling you to become. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's why I like the second part of scripture because God said, I came that you may have life and that you may have it abundantly. I came, so now that you've been in this process to where you've been converted and, and you're, you're in this early stages of your conversion, you're also understanding that you have to have grace for someone else because I'm going to use you, Ethan, I'm going to use you, Tim Kedia, and Ethan to share your story that you've came through, that you've triumphed through. But you got to have grace when you see people who don't look like what you believe they should look because they ain't fully converted yet. Right. You're not fully converted in somebody's eyes. Conversion is a process. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And, and people... We often say uh, the same compassion you want from others is the same compassion, compassion you shall have towards others. Absolutely, Thelma, I agree. The same compassion you want should be the same compassion you give. I think that's only fair. You caught me at a bad time drinking vegetable <laughs> juice. I mean, what do you, what do you want me to say? I mean, not fair? No, I'm just saying. That's what you kept me juicy mouthed. It. <laughs> yes, absolutely. The same compassion that you want from others is, is the same compassion you have to give in return. So in understanding that, that God gave us grace and you have to give your fellow brother, your fellow sister grace, then that's when I think things get easier. Things get better. You can walk that, that, that path. But you have to understand that. You really, hey, Auntie Denise, you really have to understand that. So, conversion. How have you begun to allow God to really enter your life, to truly converge your life? Are you a Christian? Or are you truly living Christ-like? Have you truly given your life to Christ? And do you truly believe the words that he has for our life, that he has for your life, that he has for your family? Hey, auntie, do you truly believe those words? Are you truly a believer? Have you truly been converted to believe that you, not me, but you have not because you ask not because you don't believe because you haven't converted your mind? Do you truly believe that you can break the generational curse in your family? Have you converted your mind to know that he who is in Christ is a new creation? The old is gone. Gone. Bye-bye. Behold, the new has come. When you convert, conversion, when you convert to a true child of God, a true believer, truly trusting and having faith and actions, when you truly convert to being a child of God, the old things that used to hold you down, yeah, they're going to still come for you, but you're going to already be past them. You're going to be so busy looking forward towards what God is calling you, where God is calling you. What he's, what he's pulling you to, what you're yearning for, you won't have time to look back what you came from. Is that, does that make sense? Yeah, when you think about conversion, that was in my... A healing, when a healing has taken place in that area, mm -hmm. those, um, those temptations and those things may come about, but you won't handle them the same because you aren't the same. Yes, indeed. The Amen, brother. Ephesians 4.22, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. Yes, amen. I want to say 
my next scripture. One of my last scriptures was uh, Galatians 4 and 7. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. When you have truly been converted, you no longer have a slave mentality. A slave being a person who is the legal property of another and is forced to obey them. Some of us are slaves to our minds. Some of us are slaves to the devil. We don't even have to blame the devil as Eric Thomas said. You looking at the devil as this bright red creature figure with horns. No, the devil could be your thoughts. The devil could be your attitude. The devil could be your disposition towards you doing something Something that God told you not to do. It could be more of an act instead of an actual person or thing or authority figure. Because when you do one negative act, then you want to do more negative acts. It's like drinking. You have a little bit, I can have a little bit more. So when you truly been converted, you are no longer a slave, but now you are a son of God and an heir. What's an heir? A person inheriting or continuing a legacy of a predecessor. You were made in God's image. Now you've been converted to do his will, to do his walk. And now it is time for you to understand who you are in God's word. To understand that you are an heir to the throne. To understand that the power that you have, the power that you possess to live the life that he has for you. That you desire to live. Conversion is a process. It takes time but there's steps to this process. But you have to know on the other side of the process is joy. <laughs> oh, I'm tired. Yeah. No, I'm just joking. Where are you going? Well, Chris said that um, I mm -hmm. hear you, but I fail every day. In the process of conversion, you will have those times where you feel like you've fallen. Mm -hmm. But the scripture says, though a man falls seven times, he, he gets, gets back, back up. up so, Chris, as long as you get back up, you're good. Um, again, it's a process. It's not easy to undo years and years of mindsets or years and years of things that you've been taught and reinforced, you know, um, for many years of your life. So it takes time to undo those things. So it's okay to fall. Just get back up and forgive yourself. Sometimes it's hard to forgive yourself after you've fallen, especially when you're making a conscious effort and you're making a sin sincere effort to to go forward to change to be better you you know we can tend to beat ourselves up about that but if you just hey I, i'm gonna i'm gonna do better tomorrow tomorrow's gonna be a better day um uh, because i know for me um making an attitude shift i will have those days where i'm good somebody can say something and i'm good at keeping it holding my peace then you have those days where all peace is out the window and you just say some stuff and that would bother me because um i was really trying to grow in that area one for me i was really looking to that's grow right, that's right in that area <laughs> <laughs> and so i would beat myself up so bad like why did i let them get me down like that why did i let them take my peace today and it's just like, you know, I'm human. And sometimes people will just keep on pushing, keep on pushing, keep on pushing. And you just don't have it for them today. So it's like, okay, I, I missed it. But tomorrow is a different day. Just because I was I, I was off my square today don't mean that to, tomorrow I can get back on the horse and go back into what I was looking to accomplish so it's a process every day won't be a victory but that's okay you know we're learning we're growing and that's the main the main thing sup tay he says sup what's going on tay i want to touch on a few things for we uh as you read and take the comments and thelma's comments and then i guess we can react to those because I, I read those already those are great words but i'll never forgive myself oh okay here we go okay I put my shades on. <laughs> oh, it's getting real. We putting the shades on. <laughs> Watch no, out now. No, no, no. I'm going to the other side because I fail every day as well. 
I fail every day as well. And I like to say failure is not a bad thing. Failure is part of the process to success. When it's a calculated failure, when it's a calculated risk, as I like to say, meaning that I put myself in a position to where I may possibly fail. I may fail on my push-ups. I may fail on my sit-ups. I may fail on my run. And those are physical feats that we can achieve and we get used to achieving those so it's not a problem. But you may fail at being what you consider is a good father for the day or a good servant of the Lord for the day. But you might not have an idea of what your child think a good dad is. Mm -hmm. You're going based off your perception. You might not think that the Lord loves you today because of a decision that you made. But he's still giving you life. He may have forgiven you for that decision you made. But you didn't. we didn't forgive ourselves. Purple Ray, Purple Ray, that's right. <laughs> But we we may not have it forgiven ourselves, and we felt like we failed. Yes. But failure is part of the process to success. That's what's so so great about failure to me. It's like the card, the inspiration card. I'm willing to fail an infinite amount of times in order to reach my level of success. Hell, I'm willing to fail at being a bad dad every day. I'm willing to fail at being a bad uh, husband every day. I'm willing to fail at being a bad son and child of God every day. I'm willing to fail at being a bad co-worker at work every day. I am willing to fail my way to the process of success because if I'm failing, that means that I'm actually attempting to get better yes now if the people can't the people choose not to understand that i come with flaws i come with mistakes and i'm working on getting better and i may make mistakes over and over again but we talked about this earlier god didn't come for the righteous he didn't come for the perfect and the excellent i got it all together he came for those people that wasn't afraid to fail he came for those people who wasn't afraid to go back and say i need help lord i'm taking steps lord i'm taking chances lord and it looked like i keep falling on my face what did my wife said? A good man falls seven times, but he gets back up again. So you keep on falling down, Chris, because every time you fall down, it just makes the knees and the calluses on your skin stronger to get back up. Whether it's in your finances, whether it's in your business, whether it's in your faith, whether it's in your fatherhood, whether it's in your family, whether it's in the love for your wife or your children or what you love as a man. You keep on failing until you find your way to success because failure is part of the process to success. And I ain't telling you nothing that you don't already know because you've been through the dirt, you've been through the mud, you've been through the grind. You're an officer in an infantry unit. I've seen you do amazing things. So I know that failure is just a compartment in your mind where you may be pulling your energy and your drive from because failure is part of the process to success. That means you're willing to get up every day and do something. And we all have the ability to fail our way to success. You must, you must, you must take God at his word. You must step out on his word and not be afraid to challenge him on his word. You go far down. He said it. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy come in the morning. So you fall yourself down today and you get back up tomorrow knowing that you're going to be able to get after it again. Take us to the notes. All right. So <clears throat> we got All a right, couple of things off. going on. So Thelma said this week I had to convert my mind because I was really worrying about my finances and health. But she said she put on her praise music and she started to thank God for what's to come. And thank thanking him in advance for the doors he's going to open. Praise God, Thelma. That's a good way to turn turn that situation around. Turn that positive praise. into a negative. Yes, just start praising. Turn that negative to a positive. And positive then I negative. like that um, she began to speak life to Chris. She said, I'm not sure what you can forgive yourself for, but I'm praying in the name of Jesus that he changes your mindset. And I touch and agree with that. Um, because guilt is a powerful thing and we want you to be free from whatever it is you've done because whatever it is, we want you to forgive yourself for it. Um, Tay said, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spread not his own, spared not his own son, but delivered him for all of us. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Amen, Tay. 
And then Chris said, I wish we would have talked more in Iraq. You are great. Love you, bro. And then survival guilt is I, what he's dealing with. I understand 100%. We can definitely talk more offline. Uh, you can direct message me. I can shoot you my information. We can definitely talk more offline because I had some of that same guilt in a different aspect. But we definitely could talk about that. And we have a question. What if I don't recognize that I am stuck? You want to take it or you want me to take it? What if you don't recognize that you are stuck? That's a very interesting question because then it would, you would have to, I, I think we know if we're stuck or not. Because you have to look at the situation that you're in and you have to ask yourself whether you like it or not. And if you don't like it, we have to ask ourselves, why do I choose to stay in it? Because if we keep repeating the same thing, like me and you talk, and we talk about why do we keep going through the same process? No cheating, but maybe financial stuff like that. Why do we keep going through the same process of how to raise the kids? It's like, okay, we have to build some type of unity. We have to build some type of bond. It's something that we need to get past. We need to get over. We need to get stuck. And I think for us, we understood it was uniting together. For you, it could be maybe the person that's the, the, the relationship that I enter, the job that I enter. It could feel like I'm stuck and I'm not going anywhere because my mindset can be, okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is enough. But I got another job. I feel like I'm progressing and moving forward. But my life feels the same. My environment feels the same. And if, if that's the mindset, if that's the thought process, then I feel like we know we stuck. It's how do I get past being stuck? You know what I'm saying? Right. If that makes sense. It's like we know we stuck, but sometimes we may not want to accept it because we see things in our life that we're not comfortable with. Uh, case in point, I'm grateful for the apartment we have. I'm grateful for where we live. But I know that it's a mentality, a financial mentality or a mindset that says that maybe this is enough. You know, I never really wanted a house because of this, maybe because of that, or maybe because I went through fear. It could be a stuck mindset of this is enough. This is all I can deal with. And I've talked myself into saying that this is good enough. Well, you still can live in a house or a home or on a private piece of land and not pay crazy amounts of money and still have a small space if you want your peace. But your mindset is saying that this is all I can have. This is the relationship. This is the job. So we know we're stuck. We just don't know how to get past stuck, if that makes sense. I get what you're saying. But I think I'm. I think I'm. A look, I'm looking at it different. Well, give me what you got. That's what um, I'm asking. If I don't realize I'm stuck, then I feel like everything in my world is okay, and I'm gonna continue doing what I've been doing because I don't realize that I'm stuck. So this is what um, I believe it's important to have positive people around you or. You know, people that love you around you who can pray you through. Because a lot of times there are people who can see us stuck mm -hmm. or people who can see us going down a negative path and they mm -hmm. can pray us through. Or um, if they think that we'll be receptive, they can come to us with it and talk to us about it. Now, if they've tried to talk to someone who they perceive is stuck and they don't receive it, then I believe prayer is all that we have. You know what I'm saying? I, oh. I yeah. believe that our prayers are powerful and it's what we have. We can pray a person through if we can't if we can't talk to them and help them to see that they're stuck per se. Because if I don't recognize that I'm stuck and I'm like, oh, I'm good, it's you. Mm -hmm. We keep going through these relationship problems because it's you. It's not me, I'm good. But in all actuality, it's us. But I don't realize that I'm stuck. So since you're like, okay, she is stuck. She don't realize she's stuck. I want this to work. I have to now go to God and pray for the both of us. Not just for him to help me, but for him to help us. Absolutely. Because a lot of times we may not know we're stuck. But if we don't have anyone standing in the gap for us how does that person get unstuck or it takes something tragic unfortunately okay well, for something tragic tragic to happen in someone's life for them to realize that they are in fact stuck when you on like marriage number four and five and you like okay the common denominator and all these things is me so mm -hmm. maybe i'm the problem or you go through something tragic where you lose someone close to you or whatever that thing may be 
um, that causes you to awaken to some things that need to be changed. So I hear what you're saying a lot of times when we when we're seeking oh, oh. for change, then we realize that we're stuck in some form or fashion. But if I don't feel like I'm stuck, case mm -hmm. in point, in our old situation, I kept feeling like if you would just do this, we could be so much further. And you like, what are you saying? I'm good. I'm doing me. You do you and I'm going to do me. And I'm like, well, us doing it separately is not making us together. And you like, hey, I mean. And so I had, I made the choice to pray for the both of us. Because I already knew there were some things I needed to change. And I couldn't change you because you like, I'm good. So... All I knew to do, y'all, was pray. That's all I had. I can't change another person. I can voice my opinion. I can say how I feel. And if they're not receptive, then they're not going to receive it from me. So all I feel like I have is my prayer at that point. What if I do if I don't know, recognize that I am stuck? Okay, that is very... I get that. I, I get that. Because I, I guess understand it, it, what well, you're saying. You can if, do I well. seek, if I'm seeking change in my life, then I realize I am stuck somewhere. So but here's if what I'm I like, say. nah, I'm good. Here, here's what I, I would say. That. This is this is how 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 you I would say remedy that or attempt to alleviate even asking the question is if what if I am stuck or what if I don't know? Find a target. In order to convert to truly change, have a target that you're looking to change or convert to. What do I mean? It may be you want to open the business. So get so intentional on focusing on the information that you need to study, to find, to open the business. You won't even see the things that you felt like you were stuck on or what you're doing because now you're seeking this knowledge. You're converting your mind to shift to, I want a business. I'm going to do everything that I need to find this business. So to avoid being stuck, set a new goal, have a new target, give God a new plan. It says a man plans his way, but the Lord orders his step. Give God a plan and wake up and give yourself something to execute that plan every day. Rather, I'm going to spend 30 minutes uh, researching how to get an LLC. I'm going to spend another 30 minutes spending how to get an EIN, which is an employee identification number, a federal number. I'm going to spend 30 minutes studying one of God's words, one of his proverbs, one of his psalms. Or do as I do, open the Bible and look at something you've underlined and highlighted. Like, uh, begin to take action on other things in your life, then you won't feel like a portion of your life is, a life is stuck. So take control of your conversion of your life. Take, take this opportunity to start saying, okay, this is my time. I'm going to control it to get myself out of stuck. And I think that's what we all need to do and we all have to do, especially with this, this pandemic that's still going on, especially with everything that's going on out in the streets from protests and riots and everything that's going on. We're all getting stuck in this mindset of you versus me, us versus them, and mm. we, we're not allowed to move. We, 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 we can't do anything right now. That's another one. Um, we're unable to do anything because of the pandemic, and, and we're stuck. Our, our thinking is stuck. It's frozen. We're, we're forgetting that God is God. Yes. We're, we're forgetting that he converted us. We're forgetting he said, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. The old what? The old mindset of I, I'm not enough. The old mindset of I won't move further. The old mindset of I'm stuck and I don't know how to go forward. Yes, I do know how to go forward because I'm constantly going forward after God is pulling out of my life. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So getting out of stuck, y'all. Getting out of stuck, moving forward, and truly converting. Going back to that old conversion van that my dad had. We used that thing for a number of things. It was fakely converted. What do I mean by that? We used it as a moving truck, mm. meaning that 
We would put stuff in the back of that thing and drive to somebody's house with a couch, a chair, love seat, <laughs> whatever. You know, some garbage bags full of clothes. We use that thing as a moving truck. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Made that. You attempt to use that thing out to make out shit. You know, kiss, hug, whatever. You know, you young. You you thinking you got time to yourself. We use that thing to sneak people in to the drive-in theater. <laughs> yes, I said it. So we use it as a passenger van. Oh, yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying, although it was a conversion van, and we did several things in it, it was never fully converted to be used as a full passenger van, 15 passenger van. It was never fully converted to be used as a makeout place or a moving truck. It was never fully converted to do those things. But there are conversion vans that's been fully converted to take that capacity. Why am I saying that? Some of us get into God and we go to church every Sunday and we start the conversion process, but we never fully convert to his word. We convert to 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 the style, to the to the to the way we go to church. We we convert to the uh what's the word? The, the routine of church. Mm. But we don't can con- fully convert to God's word, to his presence, to his joy, to his peace. We don't fully give in and let go. So you 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 should not be like uh the conversion ice cream truck back in the day, you grew up in a D or in the hood near you. You knew it was a conversion <laughs> van that rolled up as the ice cream truck. But the van was not completely outfitted. It was somebody's freezer that they got from Walmart in the back <laughs> with some stickers up on the side. And they came out the front passenger window like, what you need? <laughs> okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But then you had those businessmen and women who had fully committed and converted an entire van to an ice cream truck, a business. So you have some of those Christians who put one foot in and begin the conversion process. They begin that beginning anew, but they bring all the old baggage with them after God then threw it away. And they wonder why the conversion process takes so long. Yeah. Why it's so difficult. You got to let it go. You got to fully forgive yourself because God is forgiving you. And you have to walk through that process. You have to walk through that grind. You have to walk through that muck. As Auntie Denise said, you have to figure out if you feel stuck, how do you avoid being stuck? Keep setting new goals for yourself. Keep giving God new plans. Keep asking God questions. Keep doing things to convert your life to the life that you want to live. I don't know what retirement is and I'm never seeking that because I always want to be learning and moving forward to the day that I expire. So if you truly want to convert your life to the best version of your life, you should never stop exploring more of your life. That makes sense? Yeah. My wife? Yes, that makes life. sense. Thelma says, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Hey, now I'm speaking <laughs> life to you. Share this video because it's true. Hey, singing. Hey, hey, I'm, I'm singing life to you. Share this video because it's true. Hey, nah. Hey, nah. <laughs> Leger says, serve God. God is great. Stay focused on where you're trying to go versus where you don't want to go. God is in your imagination. Hey, man, absolutely. I see him in my imagination all the time, LJ. Now, let me ask you a question. Take a tactical pause out. Does that count against you? Because you was reading. You know what you said. You know exactly what you said. You said it right in there. You read it in there. Don't? No, no, the other word. Oh, that was reading Leger's words. That ain't had them one my words. Oh, I right, don't worry so about it. it. <laughs> wow, <laughs> really? Hey, it's a conversion process. I wanted to take full responsibility. No, I'm just joking. I asked remember you. we were sitting at the table and Zachary asked this question. If you read it, yeah. So Galatians, so you gonna just <laughs> <you're> gonna <pass. laughs> She got me, y'all. Uh, I, I tried to she get got me. me. She got me. But yeah. back to your point. So it sounds like people are converting on the outside, but not on the inside. It's Absolutely. like I go to church every Sunday because it's the churchy thing to do. I'm polite when I'm in church, and then once I leave the building, I'm you know I'm me. I'm me. I'm back I'm, to I'm doing. Back. I'm back all the way live. It's right. like it's, it's um. 
So no, it's like I'm putting right. on a show. Absolutely. I learned the ways of the church, but I really didn't dive in to let the church in me. Absolutely. And you know why that is? Why that is? Because the people that call themselves bring you into Christ, they hadn't been converted themselves. So they showed you their ways. Hmm. So they weren't good examples. It's no. like going to the hospital. Everybody's sick. So but look, if I don't take the medicine for myself, then... If you I stay built in sick. that relationship with God, mm -hmm. when words come from people, it's going to probably confirm something that he's already given you. Absolutely. And the people is coming from, now he'll use anybody, but it's something to really change your life and convert you over to him. I think the people that's coming is going to bear fruit what he wants you to do. Mm, now you're talking about fruit. Take me in there now. It's going to bear fruit because a person that's coming to you to tell you about the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. And it's like when I listen to Eric Thomas and God's scripture saying, don't take, take it how you want to take it. Be offended if you want to. I get offended too. Oh, well, anyhow. Um, when I think about Eric Thomas and people say, oh, God just told me to do this and God gave me this. Oh, I just been blessed. I got this loan for $20,000. The Lord answered my prayers. But God's word says you the lender, not the borrower. Mm. So is that really bearing fruit? So the person that's coming to me telling me that God said, I got a word for you, sister. God said that blah, 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 whatever, whatever, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But you're like, oh, okay, I can accept that. But if somebody come to you and they like, you know, they cussing up and down a storm, whatever, whatever, how they life are horrible. Then they like, well, God told me to give you this word. <laughs> It's, see what I'm saying? Right. And you're and, like, I don't know whether to take that serious or not. You're not going to take it serious, but it's probably, it's probably not going to resonate. You know what I'm saying? And if you do take that word, that's probably going to delay your conversion. Because the person that probably gave you that word, you, you're not going to... Life and death is in the power of the tongue. So you're going to speak... You're going to speak death. It's kind of like you, you see people who... Uh, perfect example, kids and parents. Outside of the home, the parents and the child are model citizens and everything is cool. But you'll catch every now and again where a parent who's, oh, everything's great. They'll snatch their kid up real quick. But everybody else is thinking, oh, they sweet. Or they're thinking the kid is all good. But the kid be a terror sometimes. Right. And people do that and I think in, in, in their relationship with God at the church. I'm sister... Sister, do right. sister, do right. <laughs> sister, do right. Won't do no wrong. Hair long. Got it going on. <laughs> Bible. Oh, my phone. Speed dial. New version. All version. Hello, Jesus. <laughs> sister, do right. Bars. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about got a hat bigger than a head. <laughs> I'm about, forgive me, Lord. Don't get me because you know I got to get on brother, on brother always ready. Always ready with a scripture, always ready with a story, <laughs> but ain't always ready to do anything that's going to bless somebody else besides himself. But he always got something for you that the Lord told him to give you. But he ain't giving nobody nothing, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Word. You got those people, man, and then you, you bring people in there, these babes in Christ, and then we get lost. And then you get caught up in your conversion. And it takes you stepping back and getting into God's word for yourself. I mean, for the last three or four days, and I've read the Bible a lot. I've never, it's been quite some time since I've sat down and I really just wrote down scriptures and pages and pages of scriptures. Because when you want to change, when you want to convert, you have to put new things in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A conversion takes time. Just because you've been writing it down for four or five days don't mean it's going to switch overnight. And you probably will feel stuck but the way not to feel stuck and to continue to convert over to what god is calling you is to continue to set plans continue to set a schedule continue to put yourself in those uncomfortable situations that make you feel less than that make you feel stupid that makes you feel excuse me unintelligent or not smart enough keep putting yourself in those uncomfortable situations positions and situations and keep claiming God's victory all the way through <clears throat> nice um and 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 keep claiming it's all the way through claim the victory all the way through and you'll see your life change I I, I don't know I'm gonna get around that word 
I will say this over and over again. I won't say I'm unable to say it. I cannot, I can say that. I cannot <laughs> stress this enough. It was me continuing to believe that I could change and that my conversion from what I was doing, cheating husband, lying husband, unfaithful, you know, husband, bad father, what I what I was doing, I, I continue to believe that I could transition and change to what I am doing now. Yes. I continue to focus on the conversion of what I seen the van to be. They seem it be a real ice cream truck. I see myself really being a child of God. I see myself really being a father, really being a husband. Now, I, do I have flaws? Yes, everybody does. Nobody's perfect. But I had to see myself here to get back to this point before we can go together as a family to the next point. You have to see the conversion process in your mind. You have to see it all the way through. You have to know that hard times going to come. You have to know that you're going to get punched in the face. But it's all part of the process to your success. Conversion is a slow process. Don't let don't allow anyone to make you feel as if you haven't changed fast enough or you're not changing drastically enough from what they think you should be to what you are because God's word doesn't say that. He's, he didn't say he called the righteous. I did not call the righteous. I called the sinners. I called those guys that need repentance, okay? If I wanted the righteous, all the perfect people, I'd have just holler at them, hit them up. Yo, this guy, come up here. Let me talk to you, you know. <laughs> Y'all are already ready. But he didn't do that. <laughs> he didn't do all that. He's like, I want those people who know they're not ready, who I can use to, to show the righteous people who think they're ready that you're not really ready. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So conversion is a process, but continue to build your mind, continue to strengthen your mind by putting positive things in your life, positive affirmations in your life, positive friends in your life, upbeat music, man. Just begin to change things in your life in the direction you want to see your life go, and then your life will begin to grow. What you got? That was good. Thank you. Now, what you got? Uh, that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> Purple rain, purple rain. Um, That's what you had. Yeah. <laughs> God is good, man. Listen to me. Listen, I'm going to go on a rant. Okay. <laughs> I meant that in the best way possible. How? <laughs> How is the best way? I meant that in the best way. Well, how is that? <laughs> I, not, no, I understand that you meant it, but how is the best way possible? <laughs> Bring me in there. Bring, convert my mind and help me understand. Help me understand. Y'all help. Y'all get it? Because I want to understand. Bring me in there. You about to get something good. You about to, you know, go on a rat that's going to take us somewhere. No, you don't look like you got it. <laughs> yeah. You don't look like you bad it. You don't look like you bad it at all. Honestly, I want you to see what you was about to do. Y'all see this? Y'all see this? Y'all see this? This laughter has been brought to you by Mr. Peen and the good people of Mr. Peen LLC. Laughter is food for the soul. If you laugh more, your soul will be at more joy. The more joy that your soul is at, the easier it is to convert your life truly to Christ and start living God's word and not start worrying about the words of everybody else. We all attempting to figure it out, this thing called life. We all are attempting to get our children and our wives and our families converted over to a better way of life, the American dream of life, the Ethan dream, the Timkedia dream. We all are looking to get to a better version of life. But if none of us set a plan, give God a plan and set a schedule for our life, your life will never be converted to a different version of your life. Anyone that's gotten anywhere 
has made a plan and a schedule for their life. Jesus had a plan. He knew he was walking. He knew he was going. He knew what he was going to do. He knew that by talking to the Father and listening to the Father. You need to have a plan. Know where you're going. Know who you're talking to. What do I want this message to do? I want this message to help you to convert you to what? Whatever the best version of you is. I don't know what that is for you. Don't ask me. Because I don't know right now. God ain't personally said this person, this person, this person is the best for them. You tell me and I'll give you the words that he give me to help you get there. We can do this together. But that's what I want for you. To you to convert your life that God has given you to the best version of you. So you can bless your wife if you marry. You can bless your husband if you married. You can bless your kids if you're a mother. You can bless your children if you're a father. You can bless your mother. You can bless your father. You can bless your brothers. You can bless your sisters. If you get the best version and the true conversion in your life, your life will change generations life. You will break curse. You will start new beginnings. You will set your family on a different path. You are saved and win over souls for God's kingdom. But you have to fully convert you. You have to fully love you. You have to push you. You have to sell you to the best version of you. You have to promote you and you have to believe in you. You have to just be you. Because being you is enough. <laughs> I, I'm not able to do the rock eyebrows for two reasons. One, I haven't figured it out. Two, more importantly, I don't have eyebrows. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I shared this with my brother Sherman, Mr. J. Nelson. He is an assistant pastor. Well, I thank you very much, Chris. I appreciate that. That is uh that is great. That that I've been yeah, just yeah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Wow. Chris, That's it. Chris was able to shut you down a little bit. Flabbergasted mm. or Nah, just because you know I've heard that a number of times. People then said the black evangelist and I'm just excited. You know, he shared it with us. He's an assistant pastor, so that's kind of one of those things where you. Uh, it's an honor. It's it's an honor, and also it's also it's a, it's a it's a stuck. You have to get past the mindset that wow, God, you really can use me. So I still, you know, could feel a stuck. But as long as I'm looking forward, then it stops me from being stuck. You know, he said I share this with my pastor. Like, oh man, I'm really out there. I'm talking this stuff for the Lord. What if I get this scripture wrong? What if you you just mm. so the enemy attempts to attack your mind in every level of your conversion. It don't ever end, Jack. Okay? <laughs> you need these scriptures daily. That's why I say do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Daily. Daily. Every day. Every day. Because he coming for you. He coming for you. He coming for you. And he ain't coming with no new tricks. He ain't coming with no new tricks. Hey, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I hope he likes it too. I'm sure he will. God uses me. That's my belief. I'm not afraid for anybody to get these messages. The more people share it, the merrier. I am, uh, we are up for it. I know I am. Let me not speak first. She's like, I'm out. You up for it by yourself. <laughs> I'm in the background. That's not what I do. So uh, I'm grateful. I thank everybody for sharing these videos. I thank everybody for commenting and tuning in. I thank everybody for keeping me up to speed and on point with scriptures. I thank everybody for dealing with my silliness and my fast talking and my loud talking. Uh, no, no, no. I had good, good intentions. intentions. Oh, yeah, I yeah. I know. I'm yeah, silly. I'm just being silly. I'm just speaking my truth. That's how the enemy attempt to do you. You know, God is using you to do something to be a blessing. And the enemy attempt to tell you you can't be a blessing. That's why I say fail every day. Keep going after it. Keep on doing the videos. Keep on doing whatever it is that you do. So please keep sharing the video. Keep sharing the video. Keep sharing the video. Thank you very much. I was inspired too. Let's talk about conversion. We talk about all this black lives, black lives matter, all lives matter, the protest and the riots, and how do we become together? How do we become more of a people, right? Conversion. Now, I stand in a predominantly white neighborhood. I've said that before. 
And um, I didn't, usually didn't feel so uncomfortable walking up and down the street rocking before all this stuff you see on the news. Then I got a little bit uncomfortable for a while. So when I was walking today, I seen the police officer parked. I started to get a little bit nervous. Don't even ask me why. Because all the crap they show on TV is converting our mind to make us believe everybody out to get me. White versus black, the world about the end. You know, that's what they want you to believe, right? So I said, I'm going to take, ch I'm gonna, I'm gonna take charge of this. I'm going to convert my mind. I'm going to make it believe leave something else and besides this might just be one of the police officers that i talked to the other day now here it is i got this fear in my mind the whole way i'm walking up to their car oh you're gonna walk up to their car and put your hands in your pocket you know what's going on with all this i know i'm reaching for an inspiration card they don't know that but in order to create change, in order to create change, to convert, to come together as a people, because conversion ain't just about you. It's about the greater good. If you change, it changes someone else. I got over my fear. I took I took charge of my fear and put myself in a position to cause change. And I walked up to his vehicle. I gave him an inspiration card. And actually, I think the inspiration card was on failure. I'm willing to fail an infinite mm. amount of times in order to reach my level of success. I thought he was another officer, but he was someone different. And we had a conversation and in turn he said, oh yeah, man, I see you all the time. You walking up and down the street. Mm. I see you're, you're, man, the other guy talked about you, good guy. Your mindset is thinking one way because the enemy wants to keep you trapped in the way you used to be, what you used to do, how it used to happen. Things don't change. But when God changes you and he converts your mind and fear not, face everything and rise. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am able to walk up to this car peacefully and, and do something that will change the world. I am able to step out and do something that will that will change change my children's life. You have to convert your mind first to believe in that you're worthy of everything that God tells you that you can have, that you can do, and what you can obtain. Okay? Okay. You got it? Instagram is always done before I'm done, so we got to go. But we're going to get ready to let y'all go because I got to go. <laughs> Gotta take my stunner shades off and put my pop shoes on. <laughs> 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 I gotta convert back over to, to stay at home, dad, get in the kitchen, get dinner. Okay? You sound so sad about Pray it. Pray for me. <laughs> Have me on a mind. Took the time and pray for me. Oh, <laughs> no. Nah. I'm so glad. Hey, now there we go. <laughs> hey, listen, man. I really hope that this inspiration and this time, this hour wasn't a waste of your time. If it was, it's your fault, not mine. You should have logged off. Uh -uh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just like this joking, but I'm serious. I'm so serious. Anyhow, I hope that this time... I'm joking, but I'm serious now. Nah, don't hey now. Nah, hey, hey, I love you too. Um, feed and elevate your mind daily. It's, it's a constant renewal. Really. You put it right. You need to maintain your ideals and up level your identity. Yes, sir, Mr. Leger. I, I I have some things that woo that that's in store that you would be proud of when you see it come to fruition with all the questions you've been asking about business and schedules i just want to say thank you because we've been feeding our mind on that building that unity in that area so we have some things that we really 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 hope y'all uh hope y'all support us on and i know you'll be inspired by and it's really putting our money where our mouth is and taking this thing to the next level i haven't forgot about t-shirts still working to get that process just right before we give you the wrong thing and we have some other things coming up. We really just want to say thank you, man. Uh, helping us grow for sharing the videos. Be sure to go to the website and check out the website at www.mrpeen.com. Jump on there, leave an email or something. Get the daily blogs. Get the daily inspirational messages. Go to the YouTube channel. Please be sure to follow the YouTube channel. Follow the YouTube channel. Subscribe to the channel. Click that little ding button in the corner. So you can know when we drop a video on there, help us get to that thousand, man. We're going to reach a billion people. We're going to inspire the world. Put everybody, relax everybody, free everybody mind. Relaxation for your mind as if you on vacation. We want to put everybody in that meditative 
meditative, relaxed, vacation, calm mindset. So please, 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 please help us in uh, starting this movement and making this journey become a reality. Y'all have a blessed and wonderful Saturday. We going to say peace. You got something for the people? Nothing. No. Hopefully y'all can see the water. I put the water up for you today. Yeah. Don't worry about the light glare. It's water. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> y'all have a blessed, blessed, blessed and wonderful day, man. Make sure you share this video. Tag somebody in this video. We'll see y'all next time. Peace.